Hello. Hello. For the time being, works perfect. Great. Well, just let us know when we're ready to go. Bertrand is also here. Hi, Bertrand. Hi. I think we give another one minute and we start. Yes. Well, I think we can go on. If you agree. Shall we go, Lee? Shall we go? Yep. I think it's time. Wonderful. Well, um, thanks everyone for joining. I have Bertrand with me. We uh, uh, have the pleasure of having you in our workshop, in our session today. I know that this year is very special. Um, I know that uh, uh, we had so many events and webinars and conferences, so I'm extremely happy that you chose uh, our session. But I pass an API management, so uh, I'll introduce myself in a moment. I'll also ask Bertrand to uh, say a few words about himself. Let's just have a look what we want to talk about. The agenda you know, is uh, APIs iPad, what's the difference, where are they similar, and when do we use what, right? So you might have, you may have heard quite a bit about, about APIs. I mean, after all, this is, this is API days. Uh, everybody might, may have uh, their own perspective on uh, APIs, their own uh, well, take on it, depending on where they come from, whether they're more technical, whether they are product managers, digital developers, or architects. Or software engineers. Um, IPaaS is probably something that many people have heard of. We want to make sure that you leave the session today with a good understanding um, what IPaaS is and, and how to get started. And ultimately, we want to, well, you, you won't have um, a lot of slides today, and we also don't do a demo. We'll uh, talk about this in a, in a session. And since we are um, having a good crowd, we'll also take questions, and I think we have enough time for that. And with this, I really want to um, give the microphone to Bertrand and uh, introduce himself. Good evening, Bertrand. Or, well, it's afternoon for you. Good afternoon, you. Good good afternoon no. even friends. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for joining our session. I'm Bertrand Masson. I'm 46 years old, married, and happy dad of three. Uh, I'm an architect. I've done architecture and information system architecture for the last 25 years. I know, and I'm going to see uh, regularly a doctor for that. Uh, I've done architecture uh, in consulting. Uh, early 2000, uh, we implemented plenty of SOA projects for the banking industries, industry, or in the retail. I've also done architecture as a vendor. I was a founder and the with uh, some partners of an iPass company called uh, Mosquitoes that was doing the iPass CrossCut. Uh, and um, I'm also mentioning that I'm beast friendly uh, because these many years of projects around uh, architecture taught me just one thing, that architecture is about transforming business. If you see architecture as just transforming IT, then you have a great chance to finish in a white tower without any, anyone in the company understanding what you are doing. So, uh, Architecture is about transforming business. 
I'll leave the stage to Uri for a quick presentation of his uh, wonderful life and starting with explaining us what is API and API management. Thank you, Bertrand. Um, I'll spare you the details about my age. I mean, you can tell <laughs> I graduated last year. Um, so, yes, um, I'm, a, I'm a catalyst and I'm a developer advocate at Axway. You'll, you'll uh, see that I'm quite active on LinkedIn and I do invite you to connect and follow me because I do, I do quite a few things uh, in the digital world. I'm based in Singapore, uh, originally German. Singapore is home since, yeah, it's, it's almost 10 years. Um, when I look at last year, when I look at all the API days that I've been to, I'm just naming Helsinki as, as one example, or I've been speaking at uh, the one in Singapore and the one in Jakarta, the one in Australia. Um, this is a very special year because I'm obviously much more home-based, um, but this is a new world and uh, we are digital people and we have the Zooms and the LinkedIn's and in my case also GitHub. Right, since I'm since I'm a developer to some extent as well, so you typically find all the slides that I uh, have at events on my GitHub as well. In terms of previous work history, you see probably some familiar logos on the right side. And as a catalyst, we are we are helping customers making good decisions, lever leveraging our past experience with projects with customers and well with the, uh, the things that we've learned throughout our professional history. Um, since I've not uh, told you enough slides yet, here's, uh, I'm sorry, links yet, here's yet another link, it's called API Geek. So you'll see that uh, I'm, I'm running a couple of uh, open source and also open banking projects in the API world. This is not the topic today, so I, I will just hope that you'll, that you'll check it out. One of them is the Yoisho Open Banking Project, which basically gives you uh, financial services related APIs that you can use for demos, POCs, because when we talk about APIs, uh, it's nice to have Pet Store, it's nice to have a Star Wars API, but well, the customers that we work with, or well, if, if, I, if I work for a bank and I want to enable my boss and my team, I'd rather have APIs that, that do something meaningful. And then in this case, you have ATM locators and, and accounts and OAuth. And, and it's all mocked, it's all dockerized, and, and you can either consume it online or download it as, as containers. I invite you to check it out. Um, but we want to talk about, well, it's not supposed to be an introduction about APIs since this is API days, but you know, um, I always use the opportunity to, uh, to say, you know, somebody who un understands APIs really well, they will appreciate the analogy because they can use it when their mom asks you, What's this API stuff that I see on your on your T-shirt? You may see it here. And, and and somebody who is relatively new to the topic or doesn't consider themselves a technical person, they will still they will still uh, uh, appreciate this this non-technical introduction. So I've just mentioned that uh, last year I was well over the last couple of years being in Singapore. It's a very small island. Every flight is an international flight. So you also see that uh, I enjoy being on the road and I enjoy taking photos. So at some point, at some point, I was wondering, we talk so much about AI these days and we talk so much about machine learning. Um, that's great, but you know, what would an AI think if it had a chance to look at my, my timeline of, of photos, right? What would it see, right? And uh, since, since we live in 2020, uh, this is probably something that a few decades ago we would still have considered this science fiction. I was basically able to build this in a lunch break, and I can show you the result. You know, we, it's always we talk about let's talk about output first before we talk about the sausage machine in the back end, right? Let's let's talk about what the output is. And in, in my case, I can say, Mom, look, here's here's an artificial intelligence machine. It looked at my photos, and this is what it saw, and it built. It build a word cloud. And how did I do that? And how can I do this in a, in a lunch break? So there is something that's ultimately complex, right? I, um, as, as somebody who has uh, an attitude for science, I'm, I'm interested in how does machine learning, how does AI work, but I don't have the bandwidth or I don't have the deep interest to study it in detail. But I know how to, since I'm a Python developer, I know how APIs work and I know how to consume them, right? Um, so I was, in this case, I was using the cognitive services from Microsoft. And 
you know, we all know how Google image search works. You search for pizza, and for some reason, Google displays pizzas to us. And in this case, the API does the complete opposite. I submit a photo, and the API, well, the, the endpoint basically will give me data. It'll say, this is a close-up of a pizza. And these are the tags that I would associate with it. And by the way, I'm 92% confident. Right? And, and just that confidence level, obviously, is the, is the key criteria. Because uh, there is other, this is, I'm not sure if you see this detailed enough on your screens. This is definitely not a bunch of bananas. These are turtles. Right? But uh, in, in essence, the machine is only 37% 30, confident. So the only thing I had to do, and well, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's just a lunch break project uh, that I said, I'll only take photos into account where the machine is 80% confident or more. Right? And in, in summary, right, I will say APIs really help to abstract something that's, that's really complex. Um, the audience is, is usually developers right? or, or machines. Right? If I pick up the phone and say, Siri, what's the weather in Mexico? Siri will use APIs to, to, to find out what, what that does. They give me quick results. And in this case, I will argue, right? I'm, 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 I've been at Microsoft a few years ago, but I can't say I know that in detail. But my, my argument would be that because the API is so easy to use, there's more users who are actually interfacing with it. Ultimately, the, a, the AI, not the API, the AI will get a lot more sample data. The AI learns, and ultimately, it's a better product. So I'm pretty confident if I submit the turtles now, it may actually recognize them as turtles. Um, this brings us, of course, to API management, right? And this, this, is, this is my way of, of illustrating um, what API management does. But if, because if we're really honest, if we're really honest, if I'm a developer, what I care about is that thing in the, in the box on the left side. I want to have an API portal. I want to have a, a Postman collection. I want to get the swaggers. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm used to, well, having to use API keys or OAuth because ultimately I want a sandbox. I want a test environment um, to get uh, access to endpoints over HTTP. And the payloads are typically JSON. Whether, and now we are going to this, this box on the right side, whether, well, the machine in the back end, whether this is a mainframe or a Raspberry Pi actually is not relevant for me, right? And it also gives us so many benefits because, you know, the uh, the company doesn't have to make a choice anymore to say we are a Java uh, shop or we are a Python uh, engineering department or we do everything in .NET. They can make that choice each time for every specific team, for every specific use case or for every module that's available on the market because today we have to build and integrate with everything on the market, which leads us to the block in the middle, which is something that uh, some people say is the boring part. And, and I agree, this is not something you would implement if you're building APIs. We all know the examples of, of people who have tried to build authentication into the API endpoints and, and struggle with security and, and IP blacklisting and, and how do we get the analytics? How do we get, I just mentioned, um, API products and how APIs help to, to make products better? How do we monitor this? How do we offer a great service catalog? How do we, and, and that's what I meant earlier, how do we get that great developer experience that within 10 minutes I can build a Hello World program uh, with with students and they have no idea of what what bank X or bank Y or Z uses uses in the back end right um, well th this is this is my my quick take on uh, how I would typically introduce API apis API management and why we will I'm sorry why we, we would use that and uh, let's go to Bertrand for iPads iPads. Before I start on iPads, I've created because it's it's a, a new way of organizing um, uh, uh, workshops. So I've created a little poll for uh, for you to uh, see if you have followed the first part and the introduction by Uli. Uh, and I hope Uli will create the same poll after my introduction. Um, now let's go back to the subject iPads. iPads is of course about APIs. And that's one common point. We are uh, trying to identify some common points. And API, there's a good news, is a common point between API management and IPAS. But IPAS is much more about flows, uh, to put data and events in movements. So if we say that IPAS is exposing data 
and events. Uh, IPaaS will put data and events in movement and create connections between a set of API. Its audience is mainly business. Of course, IPaaS is a tool used uh, by developers, but it's it's aiming the business community within the comp within a company and creates much more value to a business user than to a developer user. That is why we are making this difference when we present IPaaS versus API management. It's a much more mid-long-term uh, usage uh, because you are organizing the business process of, of the company. Uh, it's workflows between uh, human beings. So it's much more mid-long-term. You don't uh, answer to a very short-term requirement. You answer to a strategic requirement, hence the mid-long-term vision. And you create the same logic, but not the same outcome. Uh, you create this easy to reuse uh, logic uh, in the uh, IT industry to have more users using the same uh, software artifact, uh, not to uh, create uh, accelerate development, but to enter what we what we call platform strategy and create new revenues in ecosystem business. Uh, you are not, it's a, a new way of doing architecture, it's a new purpose. You're not doing architecture just for uh, creating flows between data and events, but you are creating uh, flows mainly to create new revenues in ecosystem, in the ecosystem business. If we go into details on what are the functionalities of an IPaaS, we can split them into three main functionalities. You need to move to the next slide, Willy. Sorry. Sure. Let's see look at the thing. The first one is, uh, first functionality is to connect. And that is, we, we got three main functionalities, connect, transform, and orchestrate. And the first one is connect. Of course, connect to everything, connect to software that can be on-premise. And that's a common point with uh, software uh, categories that was called EAI, ETL. So you will find the same connectors on the uh, on-premise software that, that are already uh, that are present in the information system, but also to SaaS industry and to new softwares like cloud services, uh, and of course, IoT and all the things that are becoming too widespread on your information system. It's important to note that this functionality will surely disappear in the coming months, uh, in the coming years. When I say disappear, it will become a commodity. Uh, for example, Dell Boomi has uh, announced in April 2020 that it's open sourcing its uh, connectors. That means that anyone will be able to uh, develop a connector on Dell Boomi, saying that the uh, connector part of uh, the offer for a, a vendor like Boomi will be much will be less important or seen as less important than, than the other functionalities. Let's move on to the next one, transform. Uh, that's an important part when you create movements between uh, those two or many sources of information. You need to both transform the envelope of your message. You might need to transform the envelope of your message. That can be the, um, the channel you're using, the communication uh, channel you are using. That can be the envelope of your message. But it can also be the content of your message that you need to transform. Um, that's a common point to API management. You can do transformation. We will review this after uh, IPaaS presentation. Uh, but transformation can be done in an IPaaS via development, so uh, source code that you can uh, write uh, in the IPaaS uh, uh, solution that you have chosen, but can also be done via low-code solution. And we see that the industry is moving pretty fast into these new functionalities of low-code uh, functionalities to, to transform a message and transform events. Last but not least, uh, orchestration, uh, which is a third main functionality proposed by an IPAS. Uh, that's really where you're going to be the uh, chef d'orchestre, as we say in French. Uh, you're going to uh, organize the exchanges of data between uh, things, between uh, software, between human beings. And in the world that we are living in now, you are going to transform uh, to exchange information on what we call the hybrid information system, both your on-prem, the one that you uh, govern uh, with your IT people, and the one that you are using that can be a SaaS solution, or that can be also the uh, information system of a go-to-market partner 
that leads us back to this notion of the composable uh, economy. That the three main functionalities that are brought by an iPass connect, and as I mentioned, uh, might become a commodity in the coming months, coming years, some submission and the move to low code and orchestration uh, that implies business process, workflows, and organization of information system. You have a, a few other functions that you might also uh, want to see in, in an iPass, but they are less important. You're not going to choose an iPass because, because then it could be seen as a bonus. Uh, monitoring and supervision uh, is one of them. It's very important when you do data flows, when you do workflows, when you do business process to be able to monitor the execution of this process. So it could be interesting to have in within your iPass some functionalities of monitoring uh, delivered uh, with the iPass. And the second one I wanted to mention is, of course, all functionalities around um, development and all the, the stuff that will uh, that will create the, the, the best-in-class uh, development that you need for your iPass. That starts with, of course, versioning of your of your system. But even though it might sound uh, pretty pretty simple, I can I know a few <laughs> a few iPads that still don't version that uh, much the components of their workflow and their business process. And, and of course, to some more advanced function like CI/CD and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was the first part of the uh, work session. Uh, no questions for the time being. Uh, now we're going to move on to the next points: iPads and API management, and trying to answer the question of this work table, of this workshop. Uh, are there contradiction in terms, differences, or common points? Oui, your turn. Any contradiction in terms? What well, contradictions in terms? Um, I leave that to you. I mean, oh. the the common points the common points that I'm seeing is the well, connect. Well, if anything, right? APIs allow me, and I mentioned that in my introduction, easily allow me to connect uh, to endpoints to systems, and easily allow me as a developer. And, and you already briefly mentioned that. Uh, that uh, one difference, right? Um, APIs are for developers um, to connect me to to endpoints and to systems. Transformation, right? We we always talk about business transformation, digital innovation in an API space. But I think when I when I see your last point about orchestration, this is something that I'll say APIs allow you to do, but they don't do orchestration. Uh, by themselves, right? You need someone else, and in this case, it would be a developer who builds something in in their language of choice to to orchestrate the various puzzle pieces. So that that would be um, a, a big difference. Yep. So what we are saying, if you move to the next slide, and if I understand you well, that um, what we are saying is that if there is a sort of contradiction, if we want to find the diff main difference, that. Uh, we're not targeting the same users uh, between a a API management and iPaaS. Uh, we could say that a API management is for developers to accelerate IT transformation, as uh, Uli explained uh, in his introduction. And as he just mentioned, that's the main difference when we prepare this workshop, Uli and I, uh, we agreed on the fact that um, API management logic is a deep development. That's where the, 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 the essence of the job and uh, of a developer, uh, and that's where uh, we'll find the difference between a, a, a good developer and a very good developer, is the logic is going to implement in his development. For iPads, it's a bit different. Uh, as I mentioned, it's much more targeting the, the business community of, of, of a company, and it's made for what we call the citizen developer that reinforce the move to what we call low code, of course, because uh, citizen developers are not meant to know how to develop in any language. Uh, but that also leads to another uh, main difference, that logic is a framework. Uh, when you use an iPass, uh, and I've, I've, as I told you as an intro, uh, as an entrepreneur, I've created one. Uh, actually, your end users spend the time saying, oh, it's different how you create workflows or how you create business process in your, in this particular iPass and it's different from your competitor. And they always have this strange question of, 
could you implement the logic of your competitor within your help us? And the answer is mm. obviously no, because that's really what makes difference between two help us, because logic is a framework and it's really how you, the, the vendor of the help us see uh, the way it implements a business process that will make a huge difference between, between two help us. So if I, I would give an advice uh, when you choose an help us, make sure that you choose a, a solution that has a, a, a framework for building this logic of, of composition that really suits your needs. Connection, as, as we said before, is either done directly via the API management that will provide you a normalized uh, view of, of the uh, cleverness and the complexity of the world, or that will be uh, done via a connector. So that would be very easy and the logic to commodity. Transformation is a pain, uh, but it can be done. Uh, if, if you get the right tool, it can be done. And then goes to the logic. So that's a, a main difference between API management and IPaaS. The first one in terms of targeted users and the way the logic is built. In one case, again, uh, it's a consequence of uh, development. In the other case, it's a usage of a framework and the developers for API management and citizen developers for IPaaS. Good. Well, um, we should probably also mention um, the APIM world is pretty much standardized, right? Everything is based on HTTP. It's then based on, well, I'll say Swagger or the Open API specification. And even we have certain um, standardizations for the verticals, like the open banking standards in the various in the various regions, right? Where where the IPaaS implementations are specific, right, to, to the individual frameworks that the, that the IPaaS platforms are driving, right? Yep, and you're doing much more complex uh, composition uh, orchestration in an IPaaS than you should do in an API management. Um, mm -hmm. Again, if you're going to develop these orchestration within a, a, an API management, I'm sure because that's the magic of coding. Uh, at the end of the day, you always succeed in coding something very complex, but don't forget the maintenance issue. Uh, you may succeed in doing the, 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 the code for, for, for this very complex orchestration, but mm -hmm. you're going to have maintenance issue. And at the end of the day, perhaps the, the, the business user might not be that happy with developing an, uh, developing an orchestration in an API management. So that will be right. uh, one of the main differences. Now, and I, think, and I think ultimately, well, the IPaaS connectors are usually API based. Yep. Um, the, um, I'd say uh, yes, uh, and and the yes will be will become much more uh, true as the time goes, uh, because legacy is disappearing. So we got we 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 had this good old legacy. Uh, that required and that was not talking API, they were not able to talk API, that required a connector. But now all the cloud-based or SaaS-based solution or IoT that arrive on, on the market have sort of API as a prerequisite to exist on the market. Uh, I would suspect that someone that chooses a SaaS solution without an API layer would be, to say the least, pretty bizarre. OK. so we. We, we capture this moment, right? It's, uh, it's, it's clear if you are in the, in the API world, you're typically looking at uh, specs and you're dealing with code. If you are in an IPaaS world, then you, don't, you do not have to be a developer. You implement the logic. You're using pre-built connectors and flows. Yep. Good. Now the common points. Uh, do we have common points? Uh, it's my uh, I lead again. Yes. Okay. Um, as we mentioned before, um, in terms of functions, there are some common points. For example, uh, if we divide the world as we are trying to do it, to do since the beginning of this workshop, we could say that API management is mainly about API exposition, so giving access to data and events, and IPaaS is mainly data and events opposition. But and there is a but, and that's some usually where the, the conversation in uh, within the, the IT people uh, communities uh, become blurry. That is about transformation or consumption of API. Transformation, and that's clear, clear statement, transformation can be done in both. 
It can be managed both by API composition, but it can also be done via IPaaS mapping. So um, I am usually being asked this question, what is the best solution? And there is no correct answer. It really depends on, on the use case uh, you are facing. So uh, be aware that um, a transformation can be done in, bo in both solutions. And after 25 years, it's, it's not iPad doesn't exist since 25 years, but after I'd say 10 years of, of, of working on iPad and API management, I still can't say a perfect yes to a use case or a perfect no to a use case. There's always an exception to both things. Um, Second way of, of uh, second common point and second uh, functions where IPaaS and IPM uh, may do the job in both cases is consumption. API management, and that's a major point. And when we talk about uh, API consumption, we need to distinguish two cases. First one is when you create a development. So you are the same example as Uvi presented in his introduction. He is doing a development uh, because he has bizarre things that he do when he's stopping to work. He's making other developments for personal reasons. And he's using API. That's API consumption. So he's integrating, mm -hmm. he's creating a client to consume a server, and it is integrating this client into his development. When he does this, he's consuming an API. There's a second way of consuming API, and, and this is done perfectly well uh, via API management, and you don't need an iPad to do this. There's a second way, and it's the same verb, and that is why sometimes it's confusing, is where an API is consuming another API. So when an API from SAP is consuming an API from Salesforce. On that case, it's not that an API is producing his client. Well, yes, but this client doesn't fit into the server of the other API or the client of the other API. That's exactly the use case where in, of API consumption where you need an iPaaS. You need to transform the, the schema, the, the client of the iPaaS you want to consume to the format expected by the, uh, the, 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 the API that is using this, this API. So direct consumption uh, is and, and API consumption is, is, a, is a function that can be done in both things, but we are not talking about the same use case. In one case, we are talking about integrating an API within a development. In the other case, we are much more talking about architecturing the information system, data flows, and we are talking about connecting two APIs together. And when we say two, it can be one to many. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, as a, as a developer, and I'm using both, right? I can I can also tell you as a developer, I appreciate the level of detailed access I can get when I use APIs, but it's still well. I, I'm still required to uh, you know in in an ideal world we download the SDK and just plug it in and call the function and everything works. But we know as a developer we always have to test that, and uh, even if the swagger. The Postman collection says the API does this and does that. We always have to do trial and error. And just like you said, for each one of the target systems that we uh, implement or integrate with, ServiceNow, Dropbox, Trilio, Google Drive, Azure, whatever they are, right? we need to figure that out and maintain that because the APIs change all the time, constantly. Right? We need to uh, maintain that in the code. So on one hand, I appreciate the uh, the level of detail that we can access those. On the other hand, there is a um, a very strong overhead in in implementing and managing those. And I will say the the things that I appreciate about about the iPads is really about uh, well, I can build an I, an iPads connector that abstracts for me the API, uh, where I can I can build an iPads flow that says if a webhook is received with one parameter. I want to take that parameter and feed that into a really complex API call that I don't have to understand, that I don't have to manage, and that I don't have to maintain. And and secondly, um, when I when I implement uh, software using, in my case, Python, I'll say that again, um, I find it very difficult sometimes to uh, deal with uh, authentication. And I'm not talking about API keys when it comes to federated access. It's not even. I'm not even looking. 
to use my credentials, maybe someone else's credentials in a certain context that they have to give their consent to. And I find that much easier if I, uh, as a developer, log into an iPass and then just do a consent to, let's say, Google Drive. And, and I'll say the iPass is, is able, is allowed to access all the content and the files that were created with this iPass. And then I just use them in the flow. So I think ultimately, um, I want to be able to use both. So it's not, do I use APIs or do I use iPads? It's really just like what you said earlier. It's about where does it make the most sense? Yep, yep. And then that leads us to the last point uh, on when we use when and what. It's a purpose, and that's a common point. Um, API management and iPads share the same objective. They are made mm -hmm. to free data and function in a self-service information system in the objective of platformization of IT. And that's very important. Um, and that's also adds up to the confusion sometimes when we are discussing about API management and IPaaS. But it's very important because they, they, they do share the same, the same objectives. Um, and that can be set up in, in accelerating transformation. And this transformation can be divided into two categories, IT innovations, uh, I've started presenting myself uh, with SOA and SAP. Uh, I think we're going to see another uh, lot, uh, plenty of uh, uh, SAP integration project with the arrival of SAP ANA in the cloud that will create new challenges that API management and IPaaS will allow you to answer. So um, in that case, uh, freeing data of an SAP in the cloud, uh, the, the the conjunction of API management and IPaaS will be a great answer to do this. But it will be also a great answer for new business models adoption. And we're back to uh, something that has been presented for many years in this conference, the API days, what we call the API economy, sometimes also called the uh, composable economy. API management and IPaaS, freeing data, your data, and the data of your uh, go-to market partners, data of your suppliers, data of your customers will allow you to uh, really accelerate transformation of your business model and increase your revenues in, in, in ways that were not possible before. And that's an important, very important part that uh, both tools make possible things that were completely impossible a few years ago. And, and perhaps we have 20 something people uh, listening to us today and they're more than welcome. But Uli and I have known a world where these kind of scenario were pretty, pretty difficult, uh, sometimes pretty impossible. Uh, and now these API plus iPaaS technology op open a brand new world of, of course, complexity. We have a question of uh, Divya and we go back to this one after all, but also a brand new world of possibilities. And that's pretty interesting uh, and, and pretty challenging. It is, it is indeed. And, and thanks for you pointed out our age at the beginning. Um, <laughs> by the way, I do see that there is around 90 people uh, watching us today, which I, which I think is a, is a great number. So the, the composable economy and the, the, the entropy that that comes with it but also the level of innovation and and agility many people can't hear this word anymore um, everybody agrees with agility right because it sounds great it also comes with complexity right um i i was working at yahoo uh, a million years ago right and the world the technology looked very much different and uh, um, not too long before it was i think uh, the 99 percent of the users who were using this new internet thing they were sitting in front of a Windows machine with Netscape Navigator 4 or Internet Explorer on it, right? So the way the way you build websites, static HTML hosted on some well on some FTP server somewhere, that that was pretty easy today to do. Today we have iPads and Safaris and Chromes and MacBooks and Windows and smart smart TVs and you know all these Lego pieces from all over the the world, which allow us to really innovate extremely quickly, right? Give you an example. I live in Singapore. Um, over here, the the GovTech uh, department built a tracing app in, in I think, in, in one week. Leveraging the cloud, leveraging APIs, putting the pieces together without having to own everything. Um, 
the downside is that these things change all the time, right? Because, you know, if, if Facebook changes their API, they will not call you. So it's, it's ultimately about uh, being able to react to changes extremely fast, keeping open standards, right? Building ecosystems. And in this case, using, using a, I mentioned that at the part, uh, at the beginning, if you remember my introduction, that, that block in the middle, right? If you want to focus on your users and in the API management world, it's very often the developers who want to have a consistent experience, who want to have a nice service catalog of APIs to download and test and authenticate and have playgrounds and sandboxes. And you have your uh, backend systems um, in the back. You need something that takes care of all that complexity and, and make sure, well, everybody wants something that's easy to consume, but we want to make sure that the bad people have a really hard time uh, to break it, right? So that's that's the case for API management. And in the iPads world, um, that how you, you, you've illustrated this, this, this really well, right? It's, it's ultimately about empowering people who are ne not necessarily developers to, to connect business logic that I can, even someone from who is not working in the, in the technical department, someone who is a, a secretary in marketing, a project manager who's, who's able to uh, connect business tasks and, and uh, be, be productive, right, without necessarily having to look at code. I think we have one more slide, Bertrand, when uh, it's yeah. about um, it. um, Yep, if you allow me, I wanted to uh, take the question of Divya. Um, okay. That goes Absolutely. with your, uh, goes exactly okay. with the, the, the expression you were making. A question about um, if you have multiple, you have complex orchestration needs in large organization and an existing uh, set of uh, integration platform, what are the pros and cons of having domain APIs for the same domain? That's um, you started to uh, actually answer this question. It, it's actually a question of methodology and responsibility, uh, the question you're asking, Divya. Uh, we, as I mentioned, as an intro, uh, architecture has, has lived with the padding uh, of SOA, uh, service oriented architecture, with mentally a centralized way of seeing the information system. You create cleverness at the middle, and everybody is exchanging with the EAI in the middle of the information system. Uh, to answer uh, your question, you of course need some tools, but you also need a, a, a methodology. And we could call this the Federation of Connected Territories. You need to have uh, territories that expose to the rest of the, that takes the responsibility of exposing to the rest of the world via an, IPAS, via an API management, the information, the data they, they, they are responsible for. And that's your domain, as you mean, uh, I wouldn't un uh, understand your question as your domains. Um, and this, and that's an important responsibility because they need to be sure they communicate, as Uli mentioned before, for example, the changes they're going to make on the API, uh, the, the, the life cycle of any version of the API, if ver I'm using version one, if it dies in a month, I would appreciate that you tell me uh, before three days, uh, much longer than three days before the end of the API, et cetera, et cetera. And then I pass. So that leaves the question of having the integration platform being responsible for exchanging data within this domain. And you could imagine that an I pass, which is a new technology, would be used to as a tool to federate these domains, federate these connected territories, so federate the APIs exposed by each territories federate within your large organization, but also federate with other API with the rest of the world. Rest of the world, that could be an IT world, the SaaS transition, or that could be a business world, new relationship in the composable economy. It's, it's, we are not in a room, uh, so it's a written question and a, <laughs> a speech uh, a said answered. I hope sure. I've, I've, I've answered uh, your question. Uh, last slide. Yes. When and how we work. Um, sure. Go ahead. So, um, as we mentioned, uh, and to wrap up all the ideas we have tried to share with you today, and thanks again for joining us. Um, we uh, uh, when we when we work. So API management mainly for exposition in in a, in a portal for development for developers. Do not forget this point. Um, I promise I've seen this. Uh, I've been in a meeting for a large company, international company, 
and someone declared, I don't understand business people, they don't connect to developer portals. And you're like, yeah, well, I, I can really easily answer to this sentence. At a, an API portal is made for developer. You can add to this uh, portal, as Uli mentioned uh, also in the, in the, during the workshop, another portal made for business people. But on this one, you're not going to expose API, you're going to expose service, and you're going to speak English, French, German, whichever language your company is using, but you're going to describe a service for anyone within the company to understand. And if you need this service, then he will call the developer of his team to call the developer that is producing the API and create a beautiful uh, iPass flow. Direct consumption is possible, but it's possible when you are doing development. Uh, consumption can also be been understood from API to API. And that's where you need uh, an iPass. Uh, composition can be done in both, but do not forget that composition with the API management requires code. Uh, usually you are coding uh, the composition into your API management solution. Uh, it, it has great advantages, great pros. It does exactly what you want it, it to do. It, it's pretty performant and you own the solution. Uh, this composition can also be done uh, in, uh, in the iPass. It might be less performant. It might be, it's not sure, but it might be. Uh, but you gain time in terms of uh, doing the development. You don't do development, you are using a solution. And you, you may gain a few, a few euros or a few dollars in terms of maintenance of having uh, your composition within an iPass or your composition within development. So that's just pros and cons. As we said uh, before, uh, both solutions are possible and you, you really need to focus on a specific use case to answer these kind of questions. Um, main difference, uh, customers, we are not aiming the same population. API management is made for developers and never try to do something different. Uh, we've seen this, seen this so many times in the coming, in the last 10 years. Uh, it almost cost the reputation of API. I won't say that uh, we saw in the, in the press some articles saying, well, API haven't brought the promise that they, they were supposed to bring. Uh, it's completely false. API have brought their promise and it's a great tool for great uh, development and great solution. It's just that API are for developers and for developers only. And you need to use other tools whenever you are addressing citizen developers. Uh, for example, iPass to compose this, uh, this uh, API within a workflow or within a business process. Mm. And the how, uh, last but not least, um, in terms of API management, the logic is continue to code and code and code. It's made for developers and developers, they love code and they are really good at this and nobody's going to change this. And in the iPass industry, you're going to see um, uh, a, shift, uh, a shift to low code. Uh, when we prepare this, this uh, workshop with Uli, Uli mentioned, for example, uh, tools like EFTT, which are tools that exist for ages, which could be the sort of um, uh, end of the road, low code solution. You really got nothing to do. It just, you don't even have to understand what the workflow is with EFTT. You just drag and drop things uh, together and that creates a workflow. Of course, uh, I'm not going to compare EFTT to an iPass. Uh, you're not going to manage a business process with EFTT of a large company, a large organization in the bank industry with uh, many integration platform. I'm not saying this, but we surely be seeing uh, in the coming years, uh, low code, more low code in the iPass industry, whereas we shouldn't be see, uh, seeing this in the API management industry. Okay, and I think uh, with this, we are directly on the dot. It was, uh, thanks Bertrand, thanks for doing this together. This was great fun. I yeah, hope thank you, much. You, you took something away from this. I know there are so many, many more questions that we, um, can maybe take offline. Uh, what we want you to do, because we've done the singing and dancing, right? Um, API Days has just started, and I think there is so many exciting sessions coming up. Uh, stay tuned, there is, there is a, a full agenda. Um, I've already seen some people reach out on LinkedIn. Do connect with us and, and continue the conversation. And ultimately, um, 
Amplify, uh, the, the Axway uh, platform, has an iPad solution that uh, you can try for free. And uh, we invite you uh, to sign up for the platform and, and give it a go. And with this, I would like to thank you and uh, uh, see you next time. Thanks, Patron. Thanks. See you next time all. Bye-bye.